you had an opportunity with with Keemstar and Drama Alert to go on to go on there for a, it was a fifty thousand dollars was being offered to you to to go on this podcast, right? Fifty k. Why not do that? Like that's mm-hmm. that's a that's a giant amount of money. And yes, there's taxes attached to that. It's after it's all said and done, it's probably thirty k, right? But why not just say, okay, I'll take your money and I'll spend a couple hours on your podcast. Uh, and it, that would clear up so much of your financial burden. Mm-hmm. Okay. Keemstar story. Here we go. <laughs> well, no, no, I just, 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 but just answer that question. I, I don't, I don't want to hear the story. I just want to know, like, why would you not take 50 K? Because that's not what happened. You, you've been told a story. That's not true. I have to tell you what actually okay. happened. Please. So there's a history with Keemstar where, you know, over the years, this guy's a horrible reputation on YouTube. You know, everyone knows it. I'm not going to crap on the guy here, but everyone just go look on YouTube. You'll find out all about him and the things he said and did to people and things over the internet. Um, I've a had a little bit. bit of history with him, a little bit, but not a lot, you know. Um, and basically, he had been pretty nasty to me a few times, with tweets and things like that. I'd, what it is is people will ask me something on a stream. What do you think of Keemstar? And I'll be like, you know, it's not just Keemstar. It's a lot of guys. I don't like these drama YouTubers. I call them misery brokers. Okay, Mm -hmm. what they do is if you have a bad day, they're having a good one because you had a bad day. What kind of content is that to my to me? I feel that's the worst kind of content. You're benefiting from someone else's personal drama and misery. Keemstar is definitely one of those people in my eyes. You can disagree. That's okay. That's what I think of the guy. Okay, so I, I said this one day casually. He starts insulting me and everything on the Internet. So we have a little bit of bad blood there. Okay. All of a sudden earlier, it was last year. Okay. Unbeknownst to me, people start telling me, Phil Keemstar is trying to contact you. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I, you know, I have a public e- Craig knows. Craig emailed me. Right? I have a public email. If you want to talk to me, contact me. Let's talk. Let's figure out. You know, it's a business relationship. No email, nothing, okay? He is, he's sitting on his Twitter, and he's making public tweets. Someone tell Darkseid, Phil, I want to talk to him right now. Contact him. Tell him I need to talk to him. There's $50,000 on the table, and he needs to contact me right now. Is that first of all? Is that how you start a business relationship? Is you scream on your Twitter to have someone come talk to you? If he has something to offer me, should he not contact me? So I well, only know about this because people come to my stream to tell me about it. Okay. So, so to answer your question, I think that in, in a traditional environment, no, that's not how you start a start a relationship. Uh, when you deal in the space that Keemstar does and kind of the drama, like look at me space. Um, yes, that is how you would start it because it, you throw out fifty thousand dollars on Twitter, people go whoa. You know, yeah, I, you know, I want to want to get get this attached. So, um, is traditionally no, but we're not dealing with Coca Cola. We're dealing with Keemstar, right? And that that's what he does for a living. So he wants to put eyes on his product and drive mm-hmm. interest. So, I, I would say, yeah, he did do it the right way in in his world and in his interest. It's the okay. same thing as the people making a. This is how you not don't play a video game. It's the same shit. They're using your, I don't know, for lack of a better word, clout to make content and it works so what keem did it and you know you're you're doing that same thing you're bitter that he's not approaching you respectfully you know you you, if he actually wants to get you on his stream or whatnot he maybe should have reached out to you but you know he's he's basically using you it's like the right thing would be is to use him back right and and if there's there's, right and if there's 50 grand on the table what better way there's no way he's gonna make fifty grand back off off an interview with you. Like, wh- why? Why don't you? Why don't you just take it, cash the check, and then you're golden? Okay. Or the, even, even even if it's ten grand, even if it's five grand, even if it's a thousand dollars, like, mm-hmm. why not just be like, yeah, I'll take it, sure. Okay, let's continue because that's this isn't what happened actually. There's, Please, it wasn't it wasn't an interview. I'll, so I- explain that part because I you know there's I, I just want to know about that like you said that that's not what happened. So what did happen? Correct. So eventually I had to DM him on Twitter to even get his attention because he wouldn't contact me. You know, I learned from drama on my stream. Everyone's drawn up drama on my stream. Keem wants to talk to you. So I DM him and he's like, call me right now. I was like, I can't, you know, just tell me what is this about? You know, I'm streaming. I'm busy. Just let me know what this is about. So I, I, I'm serious. I had to go back and forth with this guy so many times for him to just tell me in a DM what I'm interested in is I want to do a show with you. I want you to host a show. This was not an interview for two hours. This was a, some kind of like an ende- a big project he wanted to be involved in. I don't know exactly what. Let me explain. So he says, but I don't want to talk about it in a DM. We got to have a phone call. 
I'm like, okay, that's reasonable, right? Let's have a phone call. Here's my number. Here's when to call me. I, I'm available at these times of the day, okay? I wait. The call never comes. It's been like two days. The call never comes. Maybe he's not serious about it. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in this guy's head. All of a sudden, I'm on streams. He starts calling me when I'm on streams. I'm like, is he, I don't, you know, I don't know what's going on again. So I DM him after the fact. I'm like, hey, do you want to So basically, it's like, it's like stupid telephone phone tag. The guy won't even contact me to talk about what he wants to offer me when I'm available, right? So at that point, I'm like, let me figure out what this is. And I talked to my wife about it. And we sat down. I was like, sounds to me like he wants me involved in a project. I don't know what it is. And my wife says, you know, you know about him, right? I was like, of course I know about him. You know, everyone knows about Keemstar. And we talked about it seriously. And we're like, you know, right now, $50,000, if this was real, would be hugely helpful for us. It would put us, you know, back, you know, jump ahead, square, almost square one, I would say, um, with all the things that are going on financially behind the scenes. And, you know, when, at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for you. You got to do what's best for the business. You got to do what's best for everything. Everyone's good interest. And... If this were someone who I felt had, like, my best interest in mind or possibly um, was not, had the history that he has, I probably would have done it, you know? But this is a guy who has a history of online. He gets you involved in something. And then everything he does is for his own personal gain, and it doesn't matter how much he hurts you as long as he's still benefiting from it, okay? There was no offer to me of being on an interview for $50,000. That's a lie. Keem is here. And Keem has said that he will be respectful and, and uh, he would love to talk. I think this is a tremendous opportunity to bury whatever hatchet or whatever it is you guys have and, and mend defense. I think this is a mm. tremendous opportunity. Are you open to that? If you want him on the show to talk, I'm not doing business with this man under any circumstances. Yeah, you establish that. That's fine. That's not yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, I'm not trying to broker a business deal or anything like that. But, but if, are you open mm. to talking with him now? I'm curious what he even wants to talk about. I'm not being on his stuff. I'm, I refuse. Okay. So. Well, let's... Okay, I'm going to so, bring him so, on. Right? Wait, wait. So you're okay with him coming on to talk? As long as he's not going to sit here and insult me or, do, you know, you guys have already asked me so many questions. I don't want him right. interrogating me, too. It's your no, show, that's, not his. No, that's, that's not... Right. I mean, Keem, uh, you know, I, I, he's watching, obviously, so it's like, that's not the case. We're, we're the interviewers. He, 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 and he just said it. He agrees. Yeah, he agrees. So, look, we're going to bring him on. And, and like I said, I think this, this is not a tremendous opportunity for friction. This is an opportunity to build a bridge. So let's do this real quick. Keemstar, welcome back to the show. How are you? Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And, Phil, thank you uh, for letting me on to talk to you directly. Um, I do mean what, I've, what I said here in the chat, that I will be respectful. Uh, I'm not here to interrogate you. But I, I desperately want to represent my point of view and this situation between me and you. Um, because what I've heard listening to this podcast or this interview or whatever you want to call it is you describing problems that you have in your life, um, paying bills, being harassed by, you know, your detractors or whatever. And I actively went out of my way to solve major problems in your life. And me and you are not friends. In fact, before I put together this business opportunity for you, <clears throat> me and you were fighting back and forth. It started mm -hmm. with you on your podcast out of nowhere, um, reacting to me retiring when I turned 40. And you said, well, that guy's evil and you know, all these horrible stuff and blood money, whatever you said about me, because you don't, you don't like my show drama. And many of your detractors uh, picked up on right away that the reason why you don't like my show and you don't support me is because we covered the the fapping uh, situation in 2016. Well, that, that's that is completely the untrue. I, oh, oh, dude, you covered oh, oh, it fairly. Go ahead, respond, Phil. You covered it fairly. You didn't even really harp on it. One of your guys contacted me behind the scenes and said, do you have anything else to add? Do you want to be on the show? I was like, no, you covered it fairly. I don't think you were unfair at all. That's not the case. Thank you, because I don't think I was unfair either. You know, no, not at all. Who told you that? That's bullshit. That's you want. That's the detractors that's making what, shit up. That, I didn't know everybody. That. Everybody jumped to that conclusion. Why you had such a hateful, uh, you know, response to me retiring was because of that. Because no. we have no previous history, Phil. Correct. I, I've I've never talked to you. The only interactions I've ever had with you 
is just covering this one story about you. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, this is a great example of why I wanted to bring you on, because there's clearly a, a miscommunication somewhere along the lines, right? Clearly. So, you know, uh, Phil thought Keem started this, Keem started thought Phil did this. All right. So are we, we're in a better, we're in a better place, which is great. So to move on from that, you sure. know, um, I see a clip and it's on Phil's stream. He's reacting to my retirement and he's saying, I'm this horrible, evil person, da, 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 and he doesn't support me. And I responded. Hold on, hold on, Kim. Kim, is that is that true, Phil? I don't like, know. I'm sure I've criticized him. I don't know specifically what he's talking about yet. Okay, continue. I, I don't. I don't know exactly what was said. I'm going off of memory, but it was something along those lines. The clip gets mm -hmm. sent to me by multiple people. Okay. Um, so I respond to Phil because the only thing I know about Phil is him being a lol cow, right? Him on stream begging for money to pay rent and stuff like that. That's all I know about him. So. I responded to him on Twitter, which I thought was pretty clever um, in gaming terms terms. And I explained to him that, like, we are roughly the same age. We've been doing YouTube for like 15 years each. We started at the same time and I'm retiring now and I don't ever have to work again. So I have completed this video game of YouTube. And I said to Phil, you're still on level one. All right. You're still on level one and you're restarting, you know, level one over and over again, like a video game and you're getting nowhere. You're still at the point where you're begging people on stream to, to pay your bills and whatnot. And I thought that was a good response, right? Even though I am talking trash and, you know, we, we got a little drama going on for Twitter and whatnot. You know, I thought that I was actually giving you good advice and you know, well, did, did, yeah, I was going to say that that um, is that advice or is that more like cause I, in, that, in that text felt form, like a, a, a backhanded smack uh, right. with, you know, Internet Twitter battles, you know, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But it's also advice. Right. My point in those Twitter yeah. videos was that Phil needs to do something different. <sighs> you know, imagine you're playing a video game, you're on level one and you try the same technique over and over again. All right. And you're dying and you have to restart the level over like you're never going to beat level one. And that's the situation that Phil has been in. Right. And uh, uh, Phil, what are your thoughts on that? Do you do you feel like there's any truth to that? Or do you feel like that Keemstar is out of his, you know, out of his way to uh, kind of make you look a fool? Uh, well, first of all, you know, the best way to give life advice is to, you know, Say it in an insulting way, for sure. I mean, that's very makes everyone very receptive to it, correct? You know, right. well, do a fair nice point, but slab slap it. Let, him, let him finish, game on Twitter. Um, is there some truth to it? Yes. Okay, but here is the thing: if you have a criticism of me, then criticize me fairly in a way where you know maybe I have a chance to have a conversation. Instead, you just go to your platform and you say something nasty about me on there. I'm a tiny little guy. Okay. When I say something on my stream, who hears it? A couple hundred people? Yes, my detractors then echo it. They extrapolate it all over the internet. Boom, it's amplified, correct? But I'm the little guy. You are a big guy, Keem. You're huge. You have a giant reach on the internet. Do you not understand that the stuff that you say and do has repercussions for everyone around you? You're, you seem to be someone that you don't, you're not self-aware. You don't understand that when you say something like that, now I have to live with that shit. For months on end, I get, ah, ha, ha, you're on level one. Ha, 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 Phil, level one. Yo, you've been for 15 years. You're just on level one. Do you think I need that? I already have enough shit in my life going on. So much stuff. I don't need Mr. Big Time punching down on me, which is what you do. That's why people don't like you, man. I didn't like, see you it. not understand that? I, I didn't see it that way. I saw a clip of you talking all kinds of shit on me, like unprovoked, and I just responded, talking shit back. But also giving you advice. That's the way I saw it. Anyhow, after that incident took place, um, months went by. And this bothered me because I saw the solution the entire time that Phil needed to do something different. All right. I am a person that recognizes entertainment. I really, really get it. You got to understand, Phil, you have haters, you have distractors. So do I. But I have more. I have more than... Uh, Wings of Redemption, mm. DSP, and Boogie combined. I have way more haters, but I'm still successful. And I still have new business opportunities, and I'm still making money. I was supposed to retire a year ago, and I'm still doing new stuff and, and being successful in this platform because I understand this business very, very well. 
And even though you have that hate, you know, they are viewers. They are your customers. The detractors are your customers. The haters are your customers. And they're more loyal than the people that give you money, that donate on your stream. The people yeah, that hate that you are way that more you're talking loyal. about, that's mm -hmm. like, you can't pay for that shit. I mean, look at how many people are here. 2,500 people are here. I, it's just, it, it, it's, you have a legitimate fan base. Those haters, those people that don't like you are your fans. And I wanted to solve this issue for not just you, but Wings and Boogie. I looked at all of you guys, your lol cows, right? You have more haters than like supporters, right? But really they're all fans. They are all fans. They're all obsessed with you and watching your content nonstop. The solution really is to get the three of you to do a podcast, all right? Those haters are going to watch. They're going to absolutely love that these three guys have come together to make content. Now, between the three of you, you guys don't have the business sense to like really figure this out and make this thing actually happen, but I do, all right? And you guys don't even understand how valuable, valuable you are as individuals, as entertainers, because you look at the numbers and you're looking at everything and like, oh, well, I've fallen off. And, you know, that's the mindset that you have. Right. But I have a different mindset for each and one of you that you guys are amazing entertainers, but just not in the way that you want to be. Right. You're lol cows. But there's so much value there by putting the three of you together. And, you know, each one of you would own 25 percent of this podcast. All right. We never got to have this conversation. So I, I do want to have it now, even though I know you're not going to do it. All right. I would also own 25%. I would do the business aspect of it. I've had many success selling podcasts um, to exclusive deals with Spotify and other companies, multi million dollar deals. All right. I wanted to put the three of you together for this show. I would do the business side of the things. And I knew that all three of you would be in a situation where you didn't really trust me or you're like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work and you'd have a lot of doubts. So I was just going to take my own money and, and take $150,000, give you each just to start off before we even filmed an episode, 50 grand up front to let you know that I was serious. And I believe in this concept and this idea. Now I call Boogie first. I instantly get on the phone with Boogie. All right. He loves the idea. He understands it. He gets it. He reaches out to Wings. Wings is down. And now it's time to talk to DSP. Boogie, the way I understand it, called you, contacted you, and told you what was going on, right? He DM'd me on Twitter, and we had a brief conversation back and forth in DMs. And, and he told you that I wanted to do a podcast with the three of you, right? Uh, yes. I had no idea that's what you were trying to contact me about because we never talked. But he said that there was this idea for a podcast, correct? So you so, didn't know. <laughs> so so Boogie told you or didn't tell you? Boogie told me that he and and Wings had spoken to Keen mm -hmm. and that Keen wanted to do a podcast with all three of us. No money or anything was discussed. He just say, you know, he, he wants to do a podcast with all three of us. I didn't know that's what Keen was trying to reach out to me. I, I said maybe that's what it was. I didn't know because I never spoke with him. Phil, hearing this, Hearing this and and hearing the uh, the business opportunity that was laid, I don't even know if it's still there or not. But uh, what are your thoughts right now, given what Keem has said to you? Thoughts like yeah. you mean? Yeah, yeah just, you just as, as he's you as he's laid this out, like lay, lay out your feelings based on what Keem Star has has laid out for you. I have I have absolutely no problem doing anything with Boogie or Wings. In fact, you know. I had the conversation with, with uh, Boogie back and forth a little bit more later in the year. Would he be interested in maybe doing a podcast with me or me behind his show or whatever? You know, whatever it may be. These guys, you know, I covered. I did a react about Wings last year about his documentary. Um, you know, that me doing a collab with them, just doing a fun podcast is not out of the question for the future. But your issue is with Keemstar and his business principles. Correct. Okay. So understand so e even if there's an opportunity for you to remove yourself from quote unquote level one and and potentially have an opportunity further down the line to potentially sell the podcast to something and and put 50 grand in your pocket initially that's that's a 100 percent no-go for you 
Oh, man. See, I didn't know that was, you put me on the spot. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what because we do. That's an interview. A, man. This is a discussion that cannot be just made by me. It has to be made by my wife. You know, we have to talk about it because this was a discussion we had that, you know, sorry, Keem. I'm going to, can I criticize you fairly if I'm, if I'm reasonable and don't, you know, not under the belt? Can we, can I be honest about you? Sure. You can say whatever you want about me. Sure. But um, I just want to represent how I feel about the situation. I'm not done, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, Keem, you are someone who, when you look at your history on the internet, it's very interesting. And I'm actually, damn, I'm impressed with what you've done. You know what I'm saying? Like, I watched a documentary about you last year. You started off trolling people in Halo. I mean, holy shit. And you turned that into an empire of money on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. That's so admirable. And if anything, one of the things you absolutely need to be praised for is your determination. You were shut down time after time. False copyright strikes, real co you know, real sh takedown requests, all kinds of shit. People wanted you off the net, right? You're still there. You never gave up. Damn, sounds that's a success story. Phil, it sounds familiar, dude. Yeah. I guess. It's, it, it literally sounds like you. I, mean, I, 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 I don't it's really true. We it just like We just heard your story, and you, it, it is. Craig's absolutely right. Okay. Now, at the end of the day, all right, when you look at what Keem has done and what I have done, I'll probably be forgotten. I'll just be a fart in the wind, right? I got 100,000 videos on the internet. No one's going to remember Dark Side Phil, besides the guy who, had, who jerked off on stream. And, you know, probably this WWE Champions thing will go away eventually, just like everything else. Who cares? But Keem, you know, has a big body of work. He's known. But when you look at wh how Keem made his money, okay? Again, I'm going off documentaries and things I've seen. I mean, Keem, you have to openly admit that there were a lot of things that you've done that you probably have no issue with whatsoever. You always feel from your perspective, because there's always two perspectives on everything, right? Holy from shit, Phil. I got to say, this is fucking rich coming from you right now, though. Yeah, you, you're, get, you're getting your information from the detractors that Keem has, and that's where you're basing this on. When this whole episode, you have been talking about how much shit your detractors have mm -hmm. made other people think about you. Like, do you hear yourself right now? Indeed, I do. That's the nature okay. of the beast. That's how YouTube works, man. That's how all this works, right? Fuck, man. You're right. So, from what I've he heard and seen about Keem, you know, I, I I call them a misery broker. All right? Keem, on a, on a day when you have a good day, it's because someone else is having a bad day. Someone else has drama going on. Someone else has horrible things happening in their life. It's your good day, man. It's time for you to blow that up. And then you interject like a like a shoe shoe wedge. Zoop. Get into that life. Get into that drama, right? You got to be a part of it. And now, get them on your show so that you can pull this out to be not just a one-time thing, but now it's going to be pulled on for weeks and weeks. If there's something Phil, do you know the profit, internet at all? Do you know oh, the know. internet at all? Yes, I do. You, do. Do you see who's who's successful on the internet? I mean, yes. yeah, I, I, I would probably be more successful if I talk shit on people, but like I don't. And, you know, I, I do what I can because hey, that's just where I, I'm at, you know? So it's like, you can't you can't be upset when people use the algorithms for their advantage, which Keem seems to have figured out. You're right. And at one point I was. At one point I was a really stupid, jealous guy. Man, I feel like I'm putting out content that's not harmful to anyone. I'm just doing gameplay. I'm dicking around on the internet here with my viewers. And this guy gets over and he's doing this drama content. People are saying it's hurtful, you know, you're right. At the same time, you have everyone has what's called a moral compass, correct? And, you know, I've I've been talking about this on my streams recently. I was raised a Roman Catholic. All right. I'm not religious anymore, by the way. So this is not like an excuse, but I grew up with certain morals. All right. And values. And to me, if the only way that I can get over on the Internet and make and get or, or just get over in life is by stepping on other people, I'm not going to step on those people. I would rather be. The I don't guy think that's what I don't think periphery. that's what Keem's doing when he's when he's making videos. You know, I I I see, yeah, D Day Cobra. Shout out to him. I saw him in chat earlier. You know, and and tweeted us out. Thank you, buddy. Uh, mm. He he talks shit on anyone. Like he he freaking, you know, he monetized the haters better than anyone I know. Right. And well, I've talked to him personally off off air, and he's a fucking great guy, and like has a good moral compass to me. I don't think talking shit about people on the internet somehow changes who you mm -hmm. are right as, as your moral compass i mean you dropped you said moral compass and it's like come on dude like can i ask phil a question 
Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, Phil, listen. All right. If if me running Dromaler is like a taking advantage of people's misery, right? Because the way I understand it, for how you're explaining it, is like uh, a YouTuber will get canceled and then I cover the story on my platform or, you know, you had the fappening, right? And I covered the story mm -hmm. on my platform that I'm making money off of other people's downfalls, right? That's the way you see it? Yes. Well, there's there's people on YouTube that run documentaries on important things that happen on the internet. They're also in the same situation, correct? What do you mean by that? They're what making kind of money. Yep. They're making money on a newsworthy story on so the internet. Like factual reporting of things that are happening, like a news network. Like, what do you mean? Of course. And then I inject my opinion on on these stories as well, but. There are YouTubers, right? They're, they're commentators. And then there's mm. commentators that do like documentary style stuff that cover drama on the internet. You're saying that every single one of them uh, is accepting blood money because they're, they're, they're voicing their opinions on what's going on. Well, simply voicing your opinion is one thing, Keem, but let's take a look at your history here. There's been documented cases where you've actually staged stuff and extrapolated drama in situations where it didn't really exist. There's evidence of this. People have admitted Explain to that. Explain yeah. that. Yeah, tell me, tell me more. I don't, I'm not aware of these. The documentary I watched last year, uh, but June the King made this one. And mm -hmm. I guess there was a situation with a YouTuber, and I forget if he was a Minecraft YouTuber or another YouTuber. And, you know, originally he appeared supposedly as an upfront, honest guest on Keemstar's show covering this drama. I think it was allegations that he had been with underage girls or something like that. Okay. Come to find out the, later on, the whole, or at least part of it was orchestrated between the two behind the scenes. Like, I guess he wanted to get back at someone, his ex or, or his current girlfriend, okay. and Keem participated in that, that I, setup situation. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. That doesn't even sound legit whatsoever. I have no okay. idea what you're you talking about. You have the right about. to deny it. That's fine. But, you know what? It's out there. Just so you know, that's well, it's out there, man. But I just want to say, I just want to say, like, you participated in supporting a YouTuber, all right, that covered a story on my misery, right? If I supposedly did something wrong, you watched and supported another YouTuber doing exactly what Dromler does. It's a good point. Well, like, and, and on top of that, mm -hmm. and just to kind of reiterate this, like once again, Phil, you're telling Keemstar that he has the right to deny that because he's saying it didn't happen. Even though you're saying there's a mountain of proof in this documentary, right? Mm -hmm. The same thing is being said to you right now about mm -hmm. your WWE legends and everything like that. And you have the right to deny it too, even though there's a mountain of evidence through documentaries online. Correct. But the, the difference, Keem, to respond to your point, sorry, there's a lot of points that just came up. Mm -hmm. uh, the documentary is not just negative stuff about you. Okay, you understand? The documentary is actually covering your entire history. I learned a lot of things about you that I find very admirable and very positive by watching that. It really did cover factually your rise and all the stuff that's happened and some of the How do you know that, though, factually? How do, how do you know it's factual? I'm just curious. It's on the internet, so it must be true? I know. I, Phil, real quick, I mean, I see documentaries on DSP, but you on the show said half of the stuff's not even true. So right. I'm confused. Is the internet... 100% trustworthy or not because when it's about me it's all facts right when it's about you it's all lies i'm i'm confused it's not all facts and it's not all lies it's it, it, it's always somewhere in between right we all know that we're not stupid we're not born yesterday when you watch that documentary you gotta kind of suspend your disbelief say hey, okay believe it or don't right make your own judgments based so on you what chose you to believe this one when it came to akeem uh, in, in, in a couple of particular cases, I'm not saying that that one documentary is the only thing I've ever heard about Keen. There's been lots of people who've been It's what you're referencing a, a lot so far. So that's what I'm going on. Can we come to the conclusion that me and you both have a bad reputation? We're controversial figures, but one of us is wildly more successful. Oh, I'm not, I wouldn't even say I'm successful at all. So okay. like, yeah, yeah. Sure. Keemstar, okay. continue with what you were saying. Okay, I think we, we've established this. Keemstar, continue with what you were talking about leading up to this. You reached out to, to Boogie Wings and DSP, uh, 50 grand on the table to start the podcast. Continue. So knowing how to help all three of them, all right, and then also creating a business opportunity for myself, right? You know, it, it is all these things combined. Um, and not only just helping TSP wings and boogie and myself, cause this is a brilliant idea, but it's also helping every single person that's in this chat right now. 
It's also helping every single one of your haters, every single one of your guys' actual supporters. Everybody wants this content. This is a win. This is a golden opportunity. So knowing this and, and wanting to reach out to help you, I found you to be so incredibly difficult to work with. Boogie already contacted you and told you that this was about a podcast. I publicly tweeted, reach out to me, $50,000, and you ignored me. Then we finally start talking in DMs, and your response is, well, email me, because I want to set up a call. We're already talking in D DMs on Twitter. Why can't we just jump on a call and talk right away? We're already communicating. You tell me to go email you. That's I. I, that is so weird from my perspective. If I reach out to the biggest YouTuber on the platform, um, uh, Mr. Beast, and I text him, hey, we got to get on the phone. I got to talk to you about something. I'm going to talk to him within 12 hours. And this is a wildly more busy guy than you, Phil. All right. And that's the biggest YouTuber on the platform. This is how content creators communicate with each other. We don't Oh, email each other. Like we have managers to do that stuff. We have lawyers to do that stuff. I have a team of people that will get in an email. I don't get in an email ever. I'm never in a Gmail ever. You know, <laughs> this is, what are you talking about? Email. It was so disrespectful to me when I'm just communicating you in Twitter DMs. We're talking back and forth and you're telling me I have to email you in order to get on a call. I was so confused by that. But I play along, all right? I think I one of my people may have emailed you or something. I got a phone number. We, we set up a scheduled time when we're going to call and we're going to talk about this. And I call you during the scheduled time and you don't answer the phone. And then I get a message back saying, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I was streaming. I told you I work at this time. Well, even if that is true and you were streaming, mm -hmm. that stream is not more important than my phone call and my opportunity. It's not. Phil, what do you think about that? Do you think that's accurate? You have, a, you have an opportunity to put five figures in your pocket and, and you mm -hmm. kind of give us your mindset there. Because I, I all, it's, don't. It's all semantics because who cares how you're talking or whatever. First of all, Craig knows how to contact me. He contacted me to be on this show. It was pretty straightforward. Wouldn't you say, Craig, it was pretty easy to reach out to me? It wasn't yeah. hard to reach me, was it? No, I emailed you. Yeah, it was easy. And when we, we were able to talk back and forth pretty reasonably with no issue, correct? I don't think we ever had an issue, right? No. I think what we're hearing well, here is... Well, hold on. You you think Craig is is a, a big YouTuber, though? Come on. Look at this guy. Oh, no, no. I'm not even saying... Hey, it has nothing once to do upon with a size. time, buddy. Once upon a time. <laughs> this has nothing to do with size. This has to do with just being reasonable. If someone has a business contact line, say, this is the best way to contact me. Please do it. But instead, you go to your giant audience on Twitter and you just scream, I want DSP to contact me immediately, $50,000 on the line. It's hostile, it's disrespectful, it's unprofessional. So you you got you got triggered and were on the defensive immediately when you saw that from, from exactly. Keem. You, you did he, not see that he was actually reaching out to help. You know, no, it, it, even not though- Not at all. I didn't even know. People had to tell oh, me oh, in my oh, chat oh. this so, was happening. So according to like what I've just heard, you were talking shit about him retiring. And he jokingly responded and, and kind of slapped you, a light, a lighthearted slap with a glove, but said, you know what? I'm going to hook you up anyway. That's the vibe I'm getting. And you were stuck on that. What year was this, by the way? Just because I kind of have a. So this was recent. Last yeah, year. roughly a year ago. Wow. OK. Well, I, I wasn't expecting that. I was mm -hmm. expecting a little, little further back. I mean, it, it feels like, Phil, you're you're in this this time of like. You're trying to find that way past this spot that you're in. And I don't mean I don't mean to like call anything out, but it does feel like that's being stuck on level one. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, and it feels like I mean, shout out to Kim for like actually reaching out after you were talking shit. Like and that's not that's that's not something that happens. And if he was right. truly trying to help you out, like that's that's kind of surprising. I, I would well, if it, someone was talking shit about me and I had a, and I was as successful as Keem, I'd been like, fuck this person. I wouldn't even acknowledge them, especially as you say, it was just some small time. I don't remember what wording you chose that you weren't even successful in your own mind. Mm -hmm. But him talking shit to me isn't a personal thing, right? It's an opportunity for me to make a Twitter video 
and make some entertainment for my audience. Like when when that's, I go on the internet, that's how you internet right there. When I that's go on the internet, internet, I'm not thinking about will people like me, will people hate me. I'm thinking let me make a piece of content that people will enjoy watching, whether they like me or hate me or whatever. Let me make some piece of content that people are interested in. That's all I ever think about when I come to the internet is serving viewers. All right. Um, Phil, well, there's, hold there's, on, hold on real quick. Phil, are you, are you okay with this? You know, I, I don't what? want, yeah, just with this conversation, you know, I mean, you came on to do an interview with me and Craig, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was a tough interview. You know, we've, we dove deep into through, throughout, you know, what was going on and you weren't prepared for, I didn't know that Keemstar would be on the show today. I didn't know either. It, yeah, Neither this, did I. Is, yeah. this is all just, just kind of happened naturally. This is the and internet. I, as as the guest on my show, I just wanted to ask you if you're cool. Like, I, I would love for this to continue. I just want to make sure you're cool with it. I, I, I'm okay with this, but, I mean, obviously right, cool. we want to get back to the other topics too, right? I mean, we kind of put everything on pause uh, and came. And we, we I will, mean, we'll, sure, but I, I think that I think something good is happening here, right? We're, we're working agreed. through things. We're understanding what, what each perspective is. I understand your perspective, Phil. I understand Keemstar's perspective. Um so I, I got a question for you, Keem. Is this, you don't mind if I call you Keem, do you? No, that's fine. Okay, Everyone calls cool. me Keem. All right. All right. All right. Is the offer still there for this to happen? I mean, if, if Phil is open to it, I would say potentially, but not really. Right. You know, I, I took Wings of Redemption and mm -hmm. Boogie 2988, who were willing to work with me and understood this business opportunity. And I'm setting up a boxing match between the two of them. And I'm going to break the internet with this. All right. This is a awesome opportunity for wings an awesome opportunity for boogie. Um, this is going to be broadcasted on May 13th. And I haven't even announced this anywhere yet. This is an exclusive. It's going to be free to watch. Oh shit. It's going to be free to watch. And can I, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Says it. Yeah. I am the guest, right? Of course. I can't yeah, please that. ask. Yeah. Keem, I, you know, again, I understand your reasoning here. You're saying I'm just making content people want to see, right? Um, is there any line that you won't cross when it comes to content that you think people want to see that you can make profit on? Do you have any kind of restraint? Do you ever feel that morally something is too far? Because I personally and many others hear this about this boxing match coming up. Okay. Now, let me give you my perspective. Okay. Okay. Wings of Redemption, Boogie, two desperate guys. We all know they're down on their luck. They could definitely use some money, right? We all know this. Yes. They publicly project that to the internet. They're both technically, from what we can see and understand, they're kind of unhealthy. Maybe not. Who knows? But you only Agree. know what they project, correct? Do you not feel that having two people like this, overweight, possibly unhealthy, doing a boxing match against each other so that everyone on the internet can laugh at them? could possibly just possibly be either putting them in harm's way or maybe be considered morally reprehensible because of the repercussions that could happen during this match. Do you not think they're but, adults that they can make their own decisions though, Phil? That's I'm fine. Just I mean, anyone can make their own decisions. That's I'm fine. sorry, Kim. Uh, please answer them. Let me respond. All right. Every single influencer boxer, whether they're healthy or not, is putting themselves in harm's way for entertainment. Mm -hmm. They're, they're all warriors and they all deserve respect. Wings of Redemption and Boogie haven't gotten any respect. In fact, it's disrespect. Very similar to you, all right? And by doing this, they will get respect. Whether people laugh or not, they are going to get respect for jumping in that ring. But you mentioned that they're unhealthy. Of course they're unhealthy. But I can tell you right now, behind the scenes, and nobody knows this, both of them have actively already lost weight training for this fight. This is a nice. positive thing in both of their lives. And I don't think either one of them have the ability to seriously hurt the other. Do you? Do, do you think they're in real danger by fighting each other? I think these are equal opponents. This is not a serious boxing match, Keen. They're not boxers. They don't know anything about boxing. These are two overweight guys that are gonna go at it, swinging. You know, are you gonna watch? No. Yes, you are. No, yes, I'm not. I, I don't, don't watch that you. crap. I don't watch Wait, your crap. Phil, you, Phil, you know, you know who is. You know who is going to watch it, Phil. Everyone else. 
everyone great really, answer right. that's exactly what i would have said i just so, don't believe you it really comes down to what i just I'm said a little while ago when, when when i look at like making content for the internet and doing stuff like this my question is will this serve viewers and i know it will i know so many people are going to tune in i know so many people want to see this and i don't believe you when you say you're not going to watch this i think you are going to watch this fight you're so Phil, mistaken you have Phil, nothing about me then dude well <laughs> Let's let's ask this, Phil. Just and, and this is just my morbid curiosity. If there was an opportunity for you, Phil, to do something physical, box, whatever, I don't know, you know, whatever it may be, that was a kind of a YouTuber versus YouTuber opportunity. Would you would you be open to that? Open no. to uh, anything no. like that? Wouldn't do it. No, that's that's not what I'm about. I'm I'm on the internet to share my passion for games, to have a cool social interaction with this, you know, my my viewers, my fans, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I'm not here to, to make a, a mockery of myself or, you know, do a, a publicity stunt. I don't do that kind of stuff. You know, people will say I do, whatever. It's your perspective. From my perspective, I just want to be in my lane with my viewers doing a good, fun stuff. I have no aspirations of grandeur or anything like that. I don't want to blow up because I did a stupid internet boxing match with someone. You know, it's so stupid to me. Th Immature, th that's honestly. fine, Phil. If I could um, finish why I'm frustrated and, and explaining myself. Continue. Because, like... Look, this all started with me retiring and you having, you know, a bad opinion on me and then us having that metaphor of, you know, you being on level one. Like, I, I really did retire like a year ago. I pretty much did retire. Now I'm doing DLC, but I'm not paying for the DLC. The DLC is paying me, you know, and I'm doing more and more and more and more stuff in this space because I just love it so much. And it comes from a place of you absolutely loving what you do and loving these mm -hmm. video games. I don't, you know who else likes video games? Wings and Boogie. You don't think the three of you on a podcast would, would be a good thing. You guys talking about games, giving your opinions, talking about current events and whatnot. You don't, you don't think that's a positive thing. Kim, I just said right here on the show, I would love to do a show with those okay. guys. I, I, I'm friendly with them behind so, the scenes. I have conversations. So when I couldn't get a hold of you and I called you multiple times, it wasn't once and you ignored it. It was multiple, multiple times. I kept calling, I kept calling, I kept DMing you and you said, oh, I'm streaming now and da, 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 da. A couple weeks went by. By the way, and... that's false what he's saying, but I'll let him keep going. It's fine. Whatever. Believe it as fact, you know. No, no, no. I want to hear your perspective. Did, That's what we're yeah. doing here. Did he? Did he not call you multiple times? He called me at least once, maybe twice, but I think it was just once. It could have been twice. He the amount of times that you've said during this interview that you don't really remember is shocking. Because I don't document this stuff. Why do I? Care? But the, but but how can you say with such certainty that it wasn't you or that he didn't call or that all these things? If if constantly, I, I'm just I'm just calling it out. Or, you know, I'm not trying to come at you, but. That, mm -hmm. I've just noticed that a lot. So now That's you fine. say, actually, he called maybe twice. Could it have been three times? Could it Again, have been four times? It definitely wasn't didn't three even or notice? four. It was one or two. It How do I know? Three or four. I've just, you know. Well, I specifically rem remember when he called me during a stream, and I'm like, who's calling me? And then when I went on a break, I opened my phone. I'm like, I don't, I, I, this must be him because I don't have his phone number. I'm assuming this must be him because, of the, you know, you get locations tied to phone numbers or whatever. And I'm like... Why is he calling me when I gave him the specific times to call me? He's calling me when I said I was busy. But Why even then, Phil, that? Phil, <sighs> you may be busy, but there's a call worth potentially 50 grand plus more on the backside of this that could take 10 minutes. I mean, Change your life. And, and once again, your, your true fans will understand. Look, I had to get on a phone call. This is a really important business call. I appreciate you guys. And you know what? They're going to stay there with you. They're going to stay there watching because they want to know what's happening. They want to know more about this. Like the idea of not taking a call just because you're streaming, like your fans will understand that, man. No. And again, I didn't even know that was him. I didn't have his number. You know, I'm checking after the fact during a break or whatever. Um, but the fact that this guy can't call me when I'm giving him the times to call was baffling to me. So first he won't. The true interaction here, I had to DM him. He wouldn't contact me. I had to DM him. He would not talk further in the DM about what this was until I demanded it. I'm like, dude, just tell me what you're talking about to see if I'm interested. I don't want to get on a call with you unless you just say, what if he had said something I'm totally not interested in at all? I'd just say, no, we're not even bothering with it. He wouldn't, I had to like pull strings to get him to even say, okay, I want you to be like a host on a show. And then he wouldn't even talk any further. He demanded a phone call. I give him my number. I give him the specific times to call. He calls the wrong times. Well, right? I guys, mean, according, guys, according to I what just, I hear from Keem, hold on, I just want to say this real quick. According to what I'm hearing from Keem, he had 
he was going to put up one hundred fifty thousand dollars to do a show with with you know three guys. Like that's a risk. That's him investing a lot of 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 his income to try to help these guys for including yourself. And I think a phone call, a wanting to do it over a phone call, is like a, a just. That's nothing in comparison to what he's trying to do. All right, I just needed to say that. Cam. And, sure. and Phil, listen. Do you want to know why I don't like the phone call idea? Why I wanted it in writing? Would you like to know? In just why? a second, keep start. Go okay. ahead, Phil. Now that we're talking about this and we're communicating for the first time, back and forth. All right, I can tell just by how you're reacting and what you're saying back to me that you actually understand that this was a great opportunity. And that's why we needed to be on the phone is so we could actually communicate. We could hear each other's voice. We could talk this thing out. You can ask me questions the 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 text conversation, the the emails back and forth. All right. That's not like really how business gets done. That's how contracts get done. That's how managers communicate back and forth and do deals. But like when we're at the very beginning of an idea and we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with this business it has to be like real communication back and forth in a phone call like it is right now mm -hmm. so okay. that's why what that's why it was so important for me to get on the phone with you okay do you under, well, do you do you agree or disagree sense? does it make sense to you phil what 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 i was going to say was sure. the reason i wanted it in writing was very simple all right again you have to understand keen you have a lot of stuff that's said about you on the internet you know that You've, we've agreed to that but right? so do you. I'm so Correct. sick of hearing but that from so you. So but so if I'm going to deal that. with this guy, if I'm, I'm going to deal with him. this guy, if I'm going to deal with this guy, I want our conversation in writing. Because what's to stop me from getting on the phone with Keen, having a conversation, and the next thing I know, he completely lies about what we just talked about to get drama on his content. Phil, that's and like me being, that's like me going to Craig. Like, hell no. I hear all this shit about Phil. I don't want him to come up here and start fucking wanking it on the show live. You know what I mean? It's, that's like me believing what the, is on the internet when I think this was actually pretty, it was a tough, but it was a good show, you know? And it was a chance for you to come clean and like really try to tackle some of the shit that's out there. But it's like, you're, you're using the same kind of shit that people have been using against you, but you're using it against Keemstar. It doesn't make any sense. I don't listen. I don't yeah. trust you, the guy. you do I hear it. You do see I don't it, right? Trust him. I do but, not but, trust Kane. But once again, you don't sorry. know me. We've never right. even talked. How, how do you? Yeah. How do you not trust the man when oh, you're getting your information from the internet? The internet is not a real place. I, I can I, tell I, you this. I do business with the biggest content creators on this entire planet. All right. I don't just run a show called Drumler. I develop video games. I represent YouTubers. I get them brand deals. I, you know. One, one of my companies represents the, the biggest streamer on the planet. I have a long business history with FaZe, Mr. Beast. Like, where, like, you don't know anything about me. You, you don't, right? But if we had a conversation and you got to learn about me and what I've done and the business opportunities that I've created for this industry for the last 15 years, your opinion of me would be wildly different than you watching a drama documentary about me, something that you be you're, you're against, like you know this is blood money. It was but that's where you got your information from. It was it was me. a it talked a lot positively about you. Why do you think I watched a drama video about you? That's not what I watched. So it talked it talked positively about me, but by watching it, you had a negative view of me. Uh, that doesn't. It's no, not I told you. Up. I actually I respect you immensely, but. I don't know after all, the, it's not just that. There's other things too, other people that have said things about you and their dealings with you. I have to kind of be protective of myself and my business and my family. Was there I, ever, I've, I was feel there there's ever risk a story? Of being involved with you. I do. I feel there's a risk that I could be, you know, hang, hung out to dry somehow. I know, know that, I know that there's multiple, multiple things that I've done wrong in my career, like a, a thousand percent. I have said outlandish things. Um, in the attempt of making entertainment uh, and entertaining people. Um, you know, in 2015, one of the biggest things, uh, my team got a story wrong and I went on air with the story wrong and falsely accused someone mm -hmm. of, of, of being a pedo. It was wrong identity. It wasn't even the same guy. All right. I, you know, if you look at that story and actually look into it, the person that exposed Keemstar for that and brought that to the internet was Keemstar. 
I exposed myself for getting it wrong. I right away tried to make you know it right with that guy, offer him 20 grand. This is like back in 2015. If you actually look into any of this stuff about me, you're gonna see Keemstar saying wild effed up stuff and he's definitely wrong, but you're gonna see Keemstar making mistakes and trying to make amends for it if you actually take the time to look into it. Now, you're on this show asking these audience, this de detractors, uh, these gentlemen running this podcast to treat your story and what's said about you fair. I should have gotten the same respect from you or at least a respect to get a phone call just so we could better know each other. Phil, but do that you, didn't, but that ahead, didn't Phil. happen. Okay. And if I could finish, cause I'm almost sure. done yes, with representing, you know, my point in all this, I called him multiple times. I couldn't get a hold of him. It, it rubbed me the wrong way right from the beginning when he was trying to send me to an email, which made no sense to me. Um, and I think two weeks roughly went by and I went on YouTube and because I was looking up DSP stuff, um, you know, doing research for the podcast, um, the algorithm like sent his live stream in my feed. So I tune into it and I'm telling you the minute I tuned in, I saw Phil begging for money to pay rent and utilities. And I just lost it in his chat. I'm like, I cannot believe that like you're doing this right now two weeks ago i was trying to get a hold of you offering you the, the the greatest opportunity you've ever been offered in your entire career phil if this podcast was a success all right everyone in the chat and and, and you are looking at fifty thousand dollars it wouldn't be fifty thousand dollars this podcast would make millions. It would be a wild success. It would be a brand. This is something that would be clipped on TikTok, uh, YouTube shorts, Instagram. People would talk about this, just like you're being clipped on your little live stream now, except for we would have an opportunity to monetize it. Phil, do you, uh, do you understand kind of the, um, you know, obviously, I think what Keem is saying, he has he has this business business experience, right? He offered he's offering you an opportunity. You, you turn the other way, but there's a lot of things that that you're saying today. You're talking about um, you know Keem uh, making mistakes, uh, saying things, uh, doing business the wrong way. That can also be said about yourself. And mm -hmm. and the things that you're saying are are very. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's like holding a mirror up to yourself because I feel like. There's actually a lot of similarities between Keemstar making mistakes. You've made mistakes, things that we touched on during this podcast, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, you do understand the similarities between between what your argument is for not wanting to work with him and the reason why you have so many detractors. Sure. What I, what I would say is the difference between me and Keem, outside of wild amount of popularity difference, is that if you take a look at the body of work that I've done in the 15 years I've done it, all right, you would say, has Phil ever really outright with anything he's done actually concretely hurt someone to the point where like, you know, wow, what a heinous person. People will yeah. say that about Keem. They will say that about Keem, okay? And at the I end of the day, when I have to make business decisions about who I'm gonna associate with and who I'm not going to, I, that's a factor. And it's a, it's a moral factor for me. Um, it's, it has nothing to do with Keem's business sense. Keem, you are a great businessman. Everyone knows that. I think you would actually run the podcast very, very well. I do. Uh, I would love to do this podcast with Boogie and Wings. I have a problem with you morally, dude, with the content you put out. I do. And I'm going to let, let, let him respond. Let him it. respond to that. Listen, you just said that you've never hurt anyone, right? And you talking trash doesn't hurt me. That's just an opportunity, right? But when you treated me the way you did behind the scenes, <laughs> this sounds like bullshit coming from me, but you hurt me. I was offended. I was hurt. Like, why? Why are you treating me like this? Why, wh why can't you treat me like a man? And we, why can't we have a conversation? If you came to the conclusion that, no, I don't want to do this. This isn't right for me. That's fine. But you really showed me no respect at all. It was so disrespectful how you were treating me, making me email. I have to call at a certain time. Uh, I'm calling and you're not answering the phone. And then when people were asking your, your fans asking online, why didn't you do this podcast with Keem during this whole time? I, I forgot to mention this. He was still talking bad about me publicly. Keem, you just said it like just what you just described is probably the main reason I have 
a problem with you. You are someone who has no self-awareness and you think that you're the most important thing. You tweeted on your Twitter that I should contact you about a business opportunity. No one does that. They contact a person about the business opportunity directly. We all do it. We Everyone. all do it. Yeah, it, it's it's at, the internet, Phil. Phil it's like, the internet, man. Yeah. You said you've been doing this for 15 years, but like, do, do you not understand the way algorithms work, the way anger is addictive and how people are hooked on crazy shit? Go ahead. I want no part of that drama. I don't Phil, want to be Phil, on Phil, a podcast you, that is going to be about that. I don't want to be involved with someone. That's not, who, that's not what he, he was. I don't even know what the podcast was going to be saying. about. He's being egomaniacal. I have to just listen Phil, to what you I'm said. not. Keem, you just said my whole life should have stopped because you wanted to contact me. Really? I did my not say that. My whole life. You no, just he said, didn't say that. Answer I the call at any that. time. Even though Phil, I gave you the times to call me. Answer can I the give call you some at any context. time at all. Can, can I give you some context? From the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, every single day, I talk to at least 20 different content creators. And I, this, this is true. This is not an exaggeration. You know, I, I run an influencer boxing, uh, you know, happy punch. We represent fighters that, that do boxing. Uh, I have all my staff. Um, I have uh, YouTubers and content creators that we represent business-wise with brand deals and stuff like that. And then I run Tromler, right? So I have to get on the phone with different content creators to validate stories or get people's takes so I can you know, inject that into the story to make sure that like what I'm reporting and what I'm talking about is accurate and have a, a full perspective, right? How all this business operates, right? Between content creator and content creator is like Twitter DMs. It's like, it's like, it's like a tweet, yo, DM me. Yo, let's hop on a, a phone call. When we're talking about contracts and stuff, then you have lawyers, you have managers, they're in emails, emailing each other back and forth. But the content creators, which we are both content creators, we are on the same level. I'm not higher than you. You're not higher than me. We have a mutual respect as content creators. We should be able to be in Twitter DMs and then get on a phone call. And you didn't treat me like that. You treated me like dirt. This is not about me thinking I'm God. This is about how you treated me in those Twitter DMs. Keem, you, you, I gave you the times to call. You called at different times. And we never had another interaction ever again. How was I disrespectful to you? So when, when they asked me, is this opportunity um, you know, still available? When I say, I say maybe because like, I, don't, I don't know how I could work with you. You are very, very difficult to work with, to even communicate with uh, firsthand. Um, because I didn't drop everything to talk to you, I'm difficult to communicate with, even though I have what are you dropping? publicly listed ways to contact what, me. Please explain to me what you're dropping. Like, wh what is go so important that's happening that you can't get on a phone call with me? My work, my job. I'm here six days a week, full time streaming to make a living. But this job that I'm about to offer you would pay wildly more and solve all these problems that you have going on. First of all, you don't know what it's going to solve. That's a huge assumption. Second of all, I didn't know what the thing was because you never told me. You didn't call at the time you were supposed to. Didn't, didn't we're Bookie going give you... Loop. We yeah, are going you, in a loop. Yeah. Right. It, it, it's happened a lot on this episode so far. Um, right. So, look, I think let's let's leave it here, right? Um, a bridge yeah. has been gapped. You know, we, we, we brought a bridge together, right? I don't know if, if something's going to come from this with... with Keem and Phil, and there's obviously still friction there, and that's fine. Uh, but I'm I'm glad you guys had an opportunity to talk, and uh, and I think more than anything, Phil, you, you know, you're learning more about you know business in 2022, 2023, and how how interactions, you know, and the importance of being quick and nimble, and uh, and things like that along here, because that's in reality that's how business works now. So let but me put it this way: if it if it weren't if it weren't Keem, because again, I already had a negative association in my head of who Keem is. I had really very little interest in doing any work with him if it was someone else maybe i would have but you know that's the association i had i had a moral issue working with the guy so it wasn't a big deal to me that he was reaching out to me before i leave because i'm pretty much done I, i've expressed everything that i want i appreciate can it I, Kim. can i give you some criticism me? Bill, is that okay yeah because i came in saying that i'd be respectful and i wouldn't dunk on you or any of that stuff but i do have some criticism that i desperately want to express to you it's as long as it's as long as it's respectful and it's not, you okay. know, I'm going to do this in the most respectful way and, and then I'll go. And of course you can respond, but, um, I don't condone 
people harassing you, people doxing you, people going into your your private, you know, life and and doing all this horrible stuff that they've done. But I believe the reason why this has happened is because people don't trust you. You're you don't come across as trustworthy. So when you're on stream and you're asking to pay utilities and rent and all that stuff, the audience is getting frustrated and they look at you like you're a scammer and they want to know where this money is going. Well, how is he always in this situation? What is he spending his money on? <clears throat> and, and that is the motivation to dive into your personal life. You had an opportunity on this show and I watched it to just pull up the screenshot and show the WWE account. And you didn't do it. Your internet cut off. At that point when your internet cut off and you were DDoSed and you were gone off stream, the opportunity is now gone. It's gone. Because while your internet was out, you could have made a fake screenshot. All right? You're never, ever going to be able to prove what your WWE account was or is ever again because people will say he just Photoshopped it. He just made it up. You're never going to be able to prove that. Anyway. You had deal. one opportunity to do it right away with these guys. And that was it. And you didn't take advantage of it because I personally watching it and so did the audience thought that you were lying. And if, mm -hmm. and if you are lying, if it is true and, and you're not being honest, I, if I were you, this is the best advice I could give you, right? It's just be like, look, this was my account. This is that I would ask for a clean slate and I would do things different because this Restarting level one over and over and over again is the root of all your problems, if that makes any sense. I appreciate the input. It's not true, so I, I'm not going to do that. But, but I appreciate the input. If it were true, I would fess up to it. Watch the full five-hour Dark Side Phil interview and hit the subscribe button in the center of your screen to never miss a live episode of Side Scrollers Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Central Time.